pleased to welcome AJ Verma, Senior Director of Capgemini Global Energy and Utilities Practice. AJ, AJ has over 12 years of experience in IT management of smart energy and digital utilities programs, including strategy, architecture, and integration. He leads Capgemini's utilities delivery portfolio and energy solutions for North America. And previously, he'd led the digital utilities practice within the Capgemini Global Center of Excellence. And today, um, AJ is going to look at how blockchain powers energy transformation. So we hear a lot about, about blockchain. Um, it's more than just a buzzword. Um, what's it doing in the energy uh, industry? AJ, over to you. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, so let me get started, right? So I, I think in, in terms of the... AJ, do you want to run your poll first? It's working, uh, Steve. Yes, you're, you're, you're absolutely. You're, you're able to advance it. I think the question from Simon yeah. was if you had a poll that you wanted to run. Yeah, if you can run that, I'll, I think that'll be great. Uh, um, yeah, oh. just to okay. get the the view from the audience where we are. So there's a, there's a it's it's running now. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So you know the, the the poll is just just to get a view of uh, where where is your organization currently doing when it comes to the blockchain technology, right? So um, you have uh, a minute to to, to uh, provide your choice, and the kind of options we are looking at is um, some of the the responses mainly around we are still uh, experimenting with the blockchain. Um, we are developing the prototype applications and uh, uh, some of these may be blockchain application in productions, or we expect the blockchain applications in production within the next 20, 12 to 24 months. And the last but not least, you know, we, we don't know where we are. So let's, let's see um, what the response is. It's done, right, Steve? Can we, can we see the response or we can, we can see it later on? Uh, time remaining is just uh, just about to finish, I think. Okay. Uh, I think we can see the response a little later on, unless we can, unless it's available in real time. All right, no, no problem. I think we can get started, right? So yeah. I, I think in terms of the sequence, I think uh, it makes sense. Alex talked about some of these uh, heavy stuff, right? So I'll try to make it simple. Um, for the for the day, uh, when we talk about the the energy and how blockchain can help with the overall transformations, right? So, um, so you know, so so good morning and good evening to all, right? So what I'll do in terms of the high level agenda is, I'll, first thing I'll talk about where we see the whole energy industry is currently, what kind of changes we are looking at, and what kind of disruptions uh, happening in the overall energy industry. The second part is more in terms of uh, what kind of transformation we are looking at more to meet the future energy demand. And then third is uh, the, the more important, the core is uh, how blockchain can help with overall um, energy transformations and, and the benefits. And last but not least is uh, we will look into some of the blockchain activities and we'll deep dive one of the, one of the use cases. So with that, let me get started, right? So uh, you know, just to just to make sure that everybody is on the same page, uh, let's let's look into some of the key facts in terms of what's happening across the globe. So the number one population. So you know, if you look at what UN says, is the world population is expected to increase by two billion to 9.7 billion by 2050. And what does it really mean? Is this is going to increase the energy demand by a quarter? And you can imagine that meeting this kind of demand with our traditional resources like coal, gas, and oil will create an adverse impact on the environments. So we need to be very careful. The second is, uh, you know, as we talk about the energy demand, so a lot of investments is happening in that area. So, but still, um, you know, if you look at, um, we don't see any major energy-related technical breakthroughs uh, which we can expect by 2050, and we. And so, so what does it really mean is, yes, the nuclear fusion has potential, no doubt in that. But I, you know, um, personally, and I, I, you know, as per the, the data too, it's unlikely to be usable in the large scale implementation to meet this kind of demand. Now, what does it mean, right? So we need to, we, we, so, so basically what we are saying is we need a change 
for me in its demand. And what kind of change we are looking at, we are really looking at is to prepare this kind of demand, our existing energy systems need to accommodate the integra integration of the renewable sources. And when we talk about the integration of renewable sources, we are talking about wind, solar, uh, energy, PV, electric batteries, and, and in many cases, electric vehicles too. And I'll, I'll, I'll go into the more details. So the so point I want to highlight in terms of the key takeaway is, uh, you know, the energy industry needs a paradigm shift. And specifically from where we are and where we really need to go to meet the, the kind of energy demands we are looking at by 2050. So moving to the next slide. Um, so, uh, you know, let's look into some of these uh, before we deep dive. I'll, what, I, what I thought is let's look into some of the key drivers, um, specifically around what kind of changes we are hap it's happening in the, in the, from the energy industry perspective and what are the deep technology and what kind of customers changes and behaviors we are looking at and also in, in terms of the digital technology. So if you look at the, the energy industry as overall, and I'll, 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 try to, uh, uh, I'll try to keep at the high level, right? So if you look at the overall energy industry, we are looking at energy demand. We are looking at climate change is another, which is driving the overall energy industry. We're also looking into the, you know, the data and, uh, you know, from the regulation and deregulation, the privacy and confidentiality and many more. We're also looking into bringing the, the high and low tech uh, technology to bring in the, the efficiency piece, touching the efficiency piece. We're also looking into the fossil fuels versus renewable mix, right? So these are the kind of, you know, the drivers which is driving the overall energy industry as an overall. Now, if you look at the other side of the, the, the you know, uh, the fence is the deep technology. So when I talk about deep technology, is really mean is the smart grid technology or the utilities core technology. And what are those? So smart grid, so you, you'll see the grid is kind of, you know, being digitalized and a lot of sensors are being put up on the grid. So to start sending the data using the IoT technology and they start being more proactive than reactive. We are looking into the nuclear as one of the options. We are also looking into the super connectivity, the mobility, the hydrogen fuels, storage and reliability. So these are the kind of you know, the deep technology at one side. Customer, right? So, it's, so we, are living, we are actually living in the customer, uh, the consumers driven world. And one size fits all does not work in the consumers uh, driven world. The consumers' patterns are changing, right? So, you know, if you look at the, you know, um, they are trying to m become more, um, you know, energy uh, sensitive. They they want to really use it in the right way. So the, the user's pattern is changing. And the last but not least, you know, if you look at the digital technology, specifically around the blockchain and IoT, the cloud, the SaaS, the software as a service, the mobility and AI, which is also kind of driving the whole industry. Um, bringing all the best practices, what we are seeing in the other industry, and trying to drive the overall energy industry. So, you know, the, the key takeaway which I really want to highlight is there are drivers which are kind of driving the overall energy industry, and then there is a uh, the deep technology driver, and there is a customer uh, drivers which is driving the, the the way the customers look at the energy industry, and the last but not least, the digital technology as overall, what, you know, what kind of drivers we are looking at. So moving to the next slide, so, you know, so, so we talked about, we looked into um, what kind of you, you know, what kind of energy demand we are looking at. We also looked into what the drivers which is going to drive the overall energy industry. So this slide or this, uh, you know, I really wanted to focus more on what is the future of energy and how is the evolution going to be, right? So if you look at the, the future of energy, um, so there are, you know, the future of energy revolves around providing the, or building the right capabilities to provide the services to support electric vehicles, the distributed generations, right? So you can have a solar panel uh, at your home. So, you know, it's not centralized, it's more kind of decentralized. We are talking about a high-end uh, battery, which can actually use as a great storage. We are also looking into the demand side management, which is more around when to use the energy, uh, when the energy will be cheaper. So more in terms of the energy curtailment. 
and then also uh, you know the, the whole uh, uh, AMI, which is more kind of smart metering, right? So you you are moving from the mechanical meter to the electronic meter to electric meter to to the smart meter, which is more intelligent. We're also looking into uh, you know the the making the whole transmission and distribution more intelligent, putting the more sensors. So so what is it? You know, if you look at the bigger picture, it is one side one aspect is the grid needs to become more intelligent. And when I say the grid needs to become more intelligent is the customers who I, you know, like us, who use consume electricity. Now the consumers need to be the prosumers too. So I need to produce the electricity. I want to sell it back to the, the grid or I want to sell it back to my neighbor. And I also want to store and sell electricity. So, so the, you know, the, so, so one side is the grid. And then second side is if you look at the the you know it's it's a basically a consumers driven world right so the, the whole automated technology and analytics will kind of drive the way the customer consumptions and you know how the customer behavior will going to behave right so we are talking about the smart home the smart building the smart city so all these kind of will come into a play in terms of how the customer will going to use this for their own benefits and also from the from the from the environment perspective and also from the climate perspective right so the environment and the climate also going to play a, a bigger role so now just to just to get into some of the key facts right so if you look at what world economic forum is saying they are actually saying that there is a 2.4 trillion of value from the transformation of electricity for the next 10 years and this will not just bring in the the cleaner generation mix but also going to create the new jobs which is very very important and also giving a bigger choice for the consumers like us the last but not least you know the the whole grid the way the grid is going to be designed and the way the architecture will moving from the, you know, the centralized to decentralized, it's going to give the right benefit and right kind of uh, uh, privilege to the, to the people coming from the low income segments of the populations, right? So the key takeaway, what I really wanted to highlight is that the whole future of energy is going to change and, and you know, it has to be driven from one side, the, how the grid is going to look like and how the consumers want the electricity to, 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 you know, to be supplied. And how they want to really consume the electricity. So moving to the next slide. Um, now you know this is this is one of the important uh, piece uh, just to uh, look at uh, how the whole um, you know the whole smart energy infrastructure and how to create the right values from the smart energy infrastructure. So when I say the smart energy infrastructure, you know the smart energy infrastructure is being laid out across the world. In terms of smart grid, in terms of smart meters, and and the the two drivers which is kind of pushing the to to the the whole smart energy infrastructure is one is the technology advancement and the consumer pool. So we are talking about the technology is changing the consumer's world we are living in. The second one is you know if you look at utilities as overall, uh, you know it's it's kind of you know used to be a laid back industry, but now they are struggling because there is a non utilities players are coming into the market and the whole in industry is being disrupted. So there is service improvement, there is a really focusing on how do we really improve the, the, the OPEX piece. Now, so the whole energy industry as, a, as a overall, when I talk about the smart energy is being transitioned from smart metering to smart grid to smart consumer to smart renewals. And on the top of that, if you look at the overall framework, we have the the deep technology, which is the utilities technology, you know, driving the, the value from the overall smart energy infrastructure in terms of the smart metering, digital asset, the home energy management, the smart devices and PV and electric vehicles, and and also the digital technology, which is like IoT, the cloud, the mobility, and you know, blockchain, and 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 we look in, we'll look into the blockchain in more details. These are also trying to create more values from from these, uh, you know, uh, the overall smart energy infrastructure. So what I really wanted to highlight is there is a smart energy infrastructure which is being laid out right now, and the industry uh, as overall needs to leverage the deep technology and the digital technology to create the right set of values. I'll move to the next slide. Um, so this is again uh, just to just to give you a very high level view of uh, you know what are the 
kind of uh, digital and deep technology we are looking at IoT, BPMS, uh, blockchain, mobility, uh, on, on the deep technology side, which is the demand side management and outage management and demand uh, response management. And these are the use cases, right? The peer to peer trading, the connected transformer, the, the virtualized transformer, demand response, and, and, and so on and so forth, right? The self filling. So the, the 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 you know the self filling and the real time consumer information. So now, if you look at the digital and the the use case, what's happening is it's actually pushing the energy industry from the overall architecture perspective from centralized to a decentralized. So you know when I say decentralized is a customer can be a consumer and can also be a prosumer. So I can have a solar panel on my roof and I can start consuming it and I can also start selling it back to the grid or back to my, my, my neighbor. So it's moving from a centralized to a decentralized. The whole paradigm shift is happening in terms of the, the, the network architecture. We'll move to the next slide. Um, so, you know, so when we talk about decentralization or we talk about electrifications or digitalization right so it also creates a lot of challenges so the grid the way it was set up uh, i you know it was not meant for the decentralization uh, decentralization or electrification or digitalization right so the grid was more in terms of one way flow now we are talking about two way flows i can say back electricity to the grid so there are a lot of challenges comes and 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 uh, you know play when we talk about decentralization and electrification and dig digitalization and if you look at the high level key challenges uh, right so one is distributed transaction transparency and security and scalability and the cost and these are the key challenges when we talk about uh, when we look at the overall uh, the paradigm shift is happening to, to meet the, the future energy demand and make sure that we we protect, the, we protect our climate and you know and, 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 and you know make sure that what consumers are really looking at we meet the consumer's demand we have to tackle all these challenges and these are the kind of you know um, uh, the, you know the, the, the key challenges which I really wanted to highlight in, in terms of uh, easy to say decentralization and electrification and digitalization but we have to make sure that we overcome these uh, key challenges. So we'll move to the next slide. And again, this is the core, um, as, as you can understand from the topic, uh, you know, the blockchain, which is kind of helping the whole energy industry in the, in the overall transformation journey. And again, I'll, I'll, I'll not try to go into the, 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 you know, each, the definition of the blockchain, but it's actually, you know, designed to facilitate the whole distributed transaction. So we talk about centralized to decentralized, where this whole distributed transaction comes into play, and where this blockchain can really help to to you know facilitate this whole uh, distributed transactions. And 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 if you look at the main benefits, you know, um, and what we actually look into from the from the challenges perspective, um, you know, so blockchain can help. To overcome these challenges, in 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 terms of the 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 putting the benefits to the table is greater transparency, increase automations, reduce cost, enhance security and and the flexibility. Right. So these are the kind of you know if you look at the overall blockchain, this is where there is a need for blockchain to help the whole energy transformations. And I also wanted to highlight some of these key um, blockchain activities going across the world. Right. So. If you look at USA um, states, uh, there is a P2P transactions in in New York. So there is a there is a community called Brooklyn where the whole microgrid uh, community is being set up, where one customer is exchanging the the data with the with the you know exchanging the energy with the other other customers. Europe EV charging, South Africa, uh, Africa China and Japan and Australia and New Zealand. New Zealand. So I, again, I'm not going into the detail, but what I want to highlight is there is a P2P energy trading which is kind of more common use case which is happening or being implemented across the world so just getting into the details right so if you look at the peer-to-peer -peer network right so we're talking about the consumer we're talking about the consumers 
we are talking about uh, you know the the whole microgrid community which is being set up to to create or to to avoid the dependencies on the on the utilities uh, in in you know less you know less dependency on the utility grids so so a consumer or a prosumer can actually have the solar panel or wind uh, um, you know wind uh, and and create the electricity and consume it and sell it back my neighbor or you know the the consumers in living in the same community and then can exchange and this whole blockchain as you know as a technology can facilitate um, the whole transactions uh, happening between the prosumer and the consumer and also the whole smart contract which is kind of you know making sure that there is a transparency there is an accountability and 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 you know the whole uh, uh, the, the kind of validation in place so what I, what I really wanted to highlight is, you know, we, we are talking about the, the microgrid community, the prosumer, the consumer, and the blockchain, which is kind of facilitating the transactions happening between the, the prosumer and the consumer. And also, uh, the, the utility is great, right? So if I have the surplus electricity, I can sell it back to the utilities and get the credit. Or if I have the, the you know, if I need the, the, the electricity, um, uh, I, can, I can go back to the utilities and, and, and you know, take it from there. So, you know, so this is a kind of peer to peer network and you'll see a lot of use case or a lot of works happening across the globe. Um, I, I think, you know, this is the one uh, point I really wanted to highlight is, you know, if you look at the how the blockchain supports the corporate social responsibilities. And when we talk about the corporate social responsibilities, we are actually looking into the accountability and transparency, right? So if we really bring in the blockchain, it removes any discrepancies in the, in the world of supply chain. And I'm talking more from the from the renewable energy resources, right? So I can I can bring in my my own energy, you know renewable energy resources in terms of. Uh, whether it's electric vehicles or uh, storage or, or, or PV or uh, solar energy, I can I can bring in the whole accountability and transparency. The second part is you know making sure that the regulatory and audit overheads and the compliance are are in place and making sure that the whole all these near real time transitions are are, are are you know good to go and there is a kind of uh, audit and and compliance in place specifically around if uh, i'm living in a microgrid community i can sell it sell back my electricity if i have the surplus to my neighbor and this whole real time transactions comes into the play the third piece is you know the transparency digital settlement so i can use the the, the whether it's a bitcoin or whatever i can use that to 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 settle uh, between um, the whole community in terms of the, the transparency and the last but not least you know uh, creating an opportunity to create you know to earn the additional credit and six direct redemption with the the stakeholders like government and utilities so i can i can sell it back to the utilities and i can get the credit back so the point I wanted to highlight is, you know, if we looked into the blockchain, the how the blockchain helps in the overall transformation, but the most important part is it also helps and supports the corporate social responsibilities, which is one of the important aspect of looking at the, the overall uh, technology and how the, uh, the, the whole in industry is moving from where we are and where we, it needs to go. Um, I think, uh, you know, just, just to highlight where we are on the technology maturity. So still, um, you know, uh, and this is the reason I, I tried to run this poll um, and I did not get the, you know, the, the right set of data. But uh, the if you look at where we are on the technology maturity, I think we still see that it's a, you know, five to ten years away. Still, a lot of POCs are being uh, implemented. A lot of experimentations are being being done, but we see there is a huge potential uh, when we talk about the the blockchain and how blockchain can help the the overall transformation journey of the of the energy and there is a lot of work being done you know if you look at uh, from the shell and uh, you know sumitomo um, they have, they have announced a lot of investment in in in, in creating a type of energy platform and, and leverage the blockchain so these are just wanted to give you a high level view of uh, you know what's happening in terms of the technology maturity and and we are not there yet, but I think uh, you know the uh, the point here is there is a there is a good potential, there is a good future, and the blockchain can really help. Um, so the key takeaways, um, you know, so so the number one, you know, uh, the combination of digital revolution and technology 
uh, evolution will drive the future of energy, uh, you know, the future of energy and its uh, evolution. So technology will be a driver. The digitalization and all those kind of you know drive the the future of energy. The new generation of uh, you know energy architecture, which will move from centralized to decentralized. And uh, when we talk about uh, you know distributed transactions and decentralization, the blockchain can help uh, with the overall transformations in terms of the making sure that the right technology integration in place and the whole facilitate the overall transactions. Um, the 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 you know the fourth one is more in terms of uh, the corporate social responsibilities goals. We just look down in in terms of uh, making sure the transparency and audit and and compliance are in place. And um, you know, uh, so so as we see the 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 blockchain adoption rises, uh, you know, uh, the potential for the transformative or disruptive impact within the energy industry is just the beginning right now, and this is going to go. We have to adopt. We have to move with the right. Um, you know, make sure that uh, meet the energy demands. Number one, make sure that the the consumers' demands are being met. And also make sure that uh, you know the climate and you know um, and and the government and you know all those policies are also being kind of you know um, combined with all all those policies which are being kind of rolled out by the by the governments. So this is all about the key takeaways. What I and this last slide is you know um, so, uh, this is a recent UV which I have published and uh, I have given the link and uh, you know you can download and you can read in more details in terms of uh, getting into the, the the more details in terms of uh, um, you know the whole uh, uh, you know trans transformation piece and also going into the details in terms of the whole peer to peer trading and also in in terms of the the technology maturity so with that i will uh, end this I know um, we did not get much uh, from the from the from the poll perspective, so I'll, I'll skip that part. But I, I think you know this is I really wanted to cover um, uh, from the overall um, my presentation perspective, Steve. Thank you, AJ, and and uh, we appreciate that. Yeah, I think what I took from the poll was uh, a lot of people don't know. Um, well, there was a potentially another option on the on the poll, which is that we know we actually know where we are and we're not doing anything. Um, I can see that being uh, being the case, as you say, it's not mature and it's uh, probably a few years out yet. But there's some exciting stuff happening. So uh, a, a virtual warm virtual round of applause for you for uh, your presentation. And we do have Thank some so questions, much. AJ. Yeah, we do sure, have sure. some questions. Yeah. So um, to what extent will infrastructure components outside of the control of the energy industry affect the success? of energy transformation for for example in rural areas infrastructure doesn't always allow for smart meters mm -hmm. yeah uh, and and that's a very good question uh, uh, steve so um you know so the 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 kind of what we are seeing is uh, you know if you look at the the rural areas as you as you rightly pointed out um, um still i think it's a long way to go to be to be very honest, uh, you know, um, a lot of developments happening in the in the cities and and, and urban, but in the rural area, still you'll see um, we are still uh, going with this whole um, you know um, uh, mechanical meter or electronic meter or electric meter. But what's happening right now is there is a there is a lot of investment happening in in setting up this whole microgrid community, mm -hmm. you know. Where, the community is becoming self-sustainable. Um, so there is a lot of investment coming from the private, uh, you know, not just from the from the from the utilities, but also the private players are coming and 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 trying to build this whole, um, um, you know, the uh, the microgrid community, and then um, more in in terms of software as a model, you know, software as a service. Uh, yeah. You know, if you look from the software perspective, so so basically uh, set this up and then start charging the customers on as as pay as you go model, and 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 second piece what we are looking at is utilities as overall industry industry is being disrupted. They don't want to invest a lot on their infrastructure, so they they are interested more in setting up and and uh, you know doing a partnership with the private players and and set up this whole microgrid community. But in summary, what I'm saying is you know a lot of developments happening in the cities and the urban areas, but less development happening in the in the rural areas. So it's a long way to go. 
Right. Well, right, right to your to your point there at, uh, that you were making. The, the next question is: uh, What has been your experience with local regulations around using consumer-based electricity distribution, leveraging the community grid, and how the local energy giants are impeding the energy startups from offering these services to customers? Please so. Continue. Uh, so if you look at this, uh, uh, you know, the, the traditional utilities player, right? So, so they don't have an options to be, to be, to be very honest, right? So they are, they are the, so there is one model we are, we are saying is the utility is trying to become the Uber of the world. Mm -hmm. So when I say Uber of the world is they are connected with the customer. They have the data of the customer and they are trying to become an Uber in terms of making sure that customers come to them and provide the right kind of services. Right. Whether it's a, it's a phone, whether it's an internet, whether it's a appliances upgrade, um, you know, putting the solar panel at the, you know, so utility is saying that if you go to, let's say Walmart or, you know, Home Depot, I will give you a better price. I'll give you the wholesale price. So they're trying to become the whole Uber and, and trying to partner and, 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 and go with the, with the, with the overall flow uh, in this uh, whole disruptive world. They can't stop, you know, if you look at Google coming, look at Tesla is coming, they, they can't really stop. So they really need to see how we can be, you know, survive in this whole uh, ecosystem. Right. And, and, and still be relevant. And uh, fi final question, AJ. Uh, can you expand sure. a bit on, on how blockchain can expand the capabilities of business contracts within the energy industry? Um, so, so it, it's very similar to any other industry, right? So, um, you know, um, so the whole smart contracts, right? So, which is one of the uh, important element of the, the whole um, uh, blockchain technology, right? So, um, you know, the way the smart contract is being written and, and, and ensuring that um, everything flows and uh, in, the, in the right way, the, you know, whether it's a, Consumers to utilities or utilities to the you know the industrial customers or commercial customers. So it's a kind of you know it's happening in a way that it facilitates the right set of transactions, and and you know uh, and and to avoid any discrepancies and making sure that uh, you know uh, everything is happening as, as as it is. So so you know so it helps you know the, the it, it, so in summary what I'm saying is. It's it's very similar to what's happening in any other industry, whether it's a healthcare or or, or finance. It's it's the same, not a big and change. If it if it works right, it should increase the uh, you know the, the trust and the security in the in the contract chain, of course. So, right, right. And and okay. another piece, Steve, I wanted to highlight yeah. is, you know, if you look at blockchain, um, I know I, I just thought of uh, uh, you know if you look at blockchain is being highly leveraged in the finance industry at at yeah. this point. And what I see personally, and even uh, you know, the data also shows that the second industry where blockchain can play a very, very important role is energy and utilities. And this is where it has to, because energy has to transform. Yeah, yeah, and we're we're certainly seeing some interest in that area in the open group membership. So that's uh, that's uh, good to hear. So. AJ, thank you once again. We'll uh, we'll leave it there. Um, thank you so uh, much. Appreciate your time and uh, and your uh, insight into what's going on blockchain in the energy industry. So 